All right, so for question four here, let's talk about kind of that next step in your progression of math and talk about what a, what talk about some function notation here. So what I have here is four different type of functions, and each one gets a different name. Uh, when I say f of x, that's like saying y equals mx plus b. f of x and y, again, are like the same idea. This is just a different name, g of x, to distinguish it from the first graph, so we just give these different names h of x and j of x. Now, what we're going to do here is evaluation. You've been doing this for years and years and years and years, evaluating something. On letter A, let's make sure we can start knowing how the notation is read. On letter A, it says f of 1. Now, when it says f of 1, first off it says go get the f of x function, which is 2x plus 1. And that 1 that is in parentheses you're going to replace x as 1 into the right-hand side of that function and then do uh, order of operations to evaluate it. So I'm going to take x as 1 and plug it in. And what we're going to now do is say, hey, when x is 1 right here, what is the value of that function? So 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 plus 1 is 3. So when x is 1, I get y is 3. And essentially what you're doing is creating an ordered pair. As we will talk down the road second semester, we get more into functions. We're going to talk about how we can make the graphs of these uh, more complicated functions um, and evaluating these like these create these points. Letter B says go steal g of 1, so g of x function, and we're going to plug in x is 1, x squared minus 1, so 1 squared minus 1, and then we just do some mental arithmetic, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So when x is 1, we get a y value of 0. Letter C, same deal. Go steal the x squared minus 1. You better make sure you are using those parentheses. If you do not, you're going to get the incorrect answer. And negative 1 times itself is positive 1, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So again, we get ourselves a order pair that when x is negative 1, we get y to be 0. Now, the first row we've done, we've used the f of x and the g of x function. And the f of x function you guys are very familiar with. This is what you guys have grown up with, is a linear function. Linear functions can be increasing, decreasing, or we say it's constant. g of x, that's what we've been focused on backfilling this year in Algebra 1. These are our quadratic functions. And a quadratic function either does one of two things, opens up U-shaped or opens down U-shaped. Okay, letter D. And we'll talk about more on the quadratic second semester just to start to get an idea again of what that shape is going to look like. H of negative 1 tells me to go use the H of X function, plug in negative 1 for X, and then clean it up a bit. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So when X is negative 1, Y turns out to be negative 1. This is what we call, you have not encountered this one probably, it's one that is at the end of Algebra 1, beginning of Algebra 2, we call the reciprocal function. Now, the reciprocal function, I'm just going to introduce it to you, you're going to do a lot more work with that in Algebra 2, because we just won't have the time. It looks like this where there's kind of some holes, and I'll talk maybe about that second semester, but that is what a graph of a reciprocal function looks like, okay? And letter E, we can go ahead and add the um, valuations of functions together. So letter E says, hey, go steal the J of X function, which is the square root of 49 then. Go back to the F of X function, plug in X is 3. And then just evaluate it out. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. And 7 plus 7 is a value of 14. Because we were doing two functions there, we don't worry about writing it as an ordered pair. Doesn't matter if it's a fraction f of x function, plug in x as a half, and that should be a plus one then. Two times a half is uh, one, and one plus one is a value of two. So when x is a half, we get a value of two. Could be a variable, okay? So as we see on this one here, we're gonna plug in x as two a for the f of x function, and then go back to like you're in fifth and sixth grade learning about uh, what are like terms in distributive property, and the best you could say then was for a plus one. J of x, 
our j of 144 is the square root of uh, 144 then. And the square root of 144 is get a value of 12. Now, i through m look a little bit differently. Um, and what we're doing here is kind of the reverse, meaning I want to know what does this x value have to be in order to get a return, a y value of 9. Here on the first one we did, when I said x is 1, we plugged it into the function, we get a value of 3. So what I'm asking you is, hey, if I give you that 3 to start off with, what did that x have to be then? So what we're going to be doing then is creating a bunch of equations. f of x, that function is 2x plus 1. So again, the question is, what does x have to be in order to get a value of 9, in order to get an output of 9? So solve the equation. Subtract 1, divide by 2, and x equals 4. So when x is 4, I get a y value of 9. That's what the next group of these look like. Letter J, because it says find x, find the input, find that domain, when the y value, the range, the output is negative 9. So again, we have to create equations to solve. And on this one, we get a y, or an x value of negative 9. Five. So x is going to be negative 5 in order to get a y value of negative 9. g of x goes steal the quadratic function. Now, we've been focusing on factoring, but don't forget about what we've done with square roots. This one is to be solved by square roots quickly because there is no linear term. That ax squared plus bx plus c, there's no bx. There's no linear term. So I'm going to solve this by square roots. It's very quick and efficient. So I'm going to square root both sides. And as a lot of students will say, those of us say an answer of 4. But in quadratics, we, we typically get two solutions. So here, the square root of 16, don't forget, we get a 4 and a negative 4. So there are two ways to get a 15 there, a positive 4 and a negative 4. Same thing's happening on the next one. 48 equals x squared minus 1. And we get x squared equals 49. And two solutions. So x could be positive 7 or x could be negative 7 in order to get a 48. With the last one, j of x is 10. As the square root gets rid of the squared, the squared can get rid of the square root. It is the inverse of one another. So I'm going to square both sides and I get x to be 100.